，等气坏掉了两个，跟你们一样。那你报我一个邮件，跟我说你的那个语言名字、名字。啊，我现在没时间，是有点发的有点。呃，慢一点给我发也可以，这个也可以发这个。就是就是想要一下呃笔记录的那些。耶、yeah, ，我会把你加进去，帮忙给我一下。我现在都加不，因为我想用笔记，然后一会记一下。不过你也要发给我一个邮件，让我有一个记录一下。我可以把你现在加进去，但是你也发，公司也发我一个邮件。哦，我一会又发。呀呀，让我一个记录。我跟那个叫我那边已经填过那个号码。呃 ，MIT 数学号码。嗯哼。呃，二一零九。四六四，嗯，对，嗯，然后 Teams 有吗？没有，就就没了。我看一下邮箱，什么邮箱？你的邮箱？啊，我的邮箱，嗯，这、那个就我的 first name 跟 last name， 这个是。然、啊、说说说说说什么？说什么？啊，啊你就告诉我啊，你是啊啊新学生，什么名字，什么 ID 这样子。谢谢老师。就说你你对呃，没错，明天哎哎哎哎哎，对对对对。这里住的，对对。拍拍拍！你们看，有刚上完课。点到六点。啊？四点到六点。我点到几点？我三个学期两个班。<笑>
Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ Hello, testing, testing one, two. Okay, I think everyone from you are here already. Okay, welcome to Calculus 2, I mean Calculus 2, MIT 103. So I'll be your lecturer this uh, semester. Let me write down my name. Okay, so uh, my name is uh, Ki Seng. Okay, so this is my first name and my last name is Mi. So you could call me sir or doctor, but please don't call me professor, okay? I'm not professor yet. And uh, you can also just call me Ki Seng. Okay. Um, so uh, why I ask you to call me as my name because um, I'm just a person to share the knowledge to you. Maybe I just learn a little bit more than you. Uh, we, I hope that we can learn from each other, okay, always. Uh, so we respect each other as friends, okay? Yeah. Um, okay, so a bit of demographic check. Uh, how many of you are coming from Malaysia? Okay, uh, how about China? Other than China or Malaysia? No. Okay, so seems like this semester we have more Malaysian than Chinese. Uh, typically, the class will be conducted in English. Okay, so if you have any problem of understanding English, you should uh, let me know and see if I can do anything about it. Um, um, yeah, so. Maybe you have found that today have more pers more people than your other classes because your senior was here. So those are your senior. Uh, actually, I like uh, this setting of this class because your class size is small and we are in a small room. Okay, so uh, you can sit in a round table and then usually because the way I conduct this uh, lecture is uh, I call it a lectorial because I don't have tutor helping me. So lecture and tutorial are combined. Okay, so 
Uh, maybe I teach for maybe 15 minutes, then I'll give you five to 10 minutes to do some question together, discuss together, and then uh, we can work on that together. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay. One thing I want to check first. Okay, I want to check your goal. What's your goal of coming to this uh, university? Okay, yeah, first year, right? Okay, what's your goal of coming in into this university? Does anyone come in because of this leaflet or, not? or brochure? Anyone of you? This is what I got from the uh, your open day. Anyone of you seen this? Thanks. Yes. Okay. All right. So yeah. So you are enrolling in the uh, Bachelor of Science in Mathematics and Applied Okay. So uh, first year, like when I do my first year, typically I have a shock when I doing maths because maths is no longer what you think. Okay? It's not just arithmetic, doing calculation and so on. Okay, we try to understand why we are doing these calculations. Okay, why these calculations work? Okay, these will be demonstrated or you will learn in this uh, course. Okay, I will put into some uh, concept question into your assignment, into your test, into your yeah assessments. Okay, so what's your goal here? Okay, there are a few goals here. Okay, there are a few goals here. Okay, run it. Okay. There are a few goals here. So first in the row is a mathematician. So anyone of you plan to do, uh, plan to be a mathematician? Okay, just one. Okay, two. Okay, good. Okay, quite good. How about, uh, okay, so I include mathematician and lecturer, teacher together. So how about lecturer or to teacher, lecturer or teacher? Anyone of you? Okay, good. So how about uh, statistician? Uh, finance and so on, doing finance job. Anyone of you? No? Also you? <laughs> or how you go? Many goals, is it? Okay, good. And how about data science? Computer stuff. Okay, computer science. A little bit. Okay, good. Mm. Yeah, pretty much here. How about the others? You don't rest out your hand. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Okay, good. Very honest. Very honest. Good. Very honest. I appreciate your answer. I think this is the most common answer found in students in here. Okay. This is what I observed when I first came to the university. Um, right. So even though you just want to survive, I still hope that you can learn some skill before you graduate from here and don't waste time here. Okay. If you're going to waste time, uh, please go and find a job. Okay, just go and find a job. It's better than you sitting here and do nothing. Okay. Yeah, so hopefully we can gain um, some new experience from each other. Right. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so why I ask you this uh, goal, about your goal? Because this is typically your... Uh, motivation to keep you going into this degree. Okay, you so you see why people drop out uh, in the middle of the degree because that okay, one of the reasons is they lost they lost their um, goal. The other reason might be you could say, hey, Steve Jobs, Michael, uh, who is the Microsoft guy, Bill Gates. Okay, they also left. You will see why, because they found their goal. Okay. They already know how to survive on their own, so they can live. Okay, so the the purpose you come into university university is because you you are not independent yet. Okay, you still need to gain some knowledge skill before you go to the real world. Okay, yeah. So going to university is not only one way to learn this. You also can show sure go into the uh, social university or somehow we call it. Yeah, just go into social and then work. You can also learn stuff, okay, just different way. But since you have the ability to come here, right, okay, so try to gain something before you leave. Okay, yeah, this is my idea. All right, um, maybe we should skip some of this. Um, yeah, so about this course, okay, so you want to pass the course, right, how to pass, okay. 
So you need to have at least 40% in your password. Okay, so there's a double pass through. Right, where's the other pass? The other pass is the whole post pass. You need to pass 55 and above. Okay, so there's two pass here. So you cannot say that you already do, you don't do close to and then just do exam. Okay, so this is already done. And then the attendance must be 80% and above. Otherwise, you'll be barred from attending the final. Okay, so these are usual uh, admin stuff. Does anyone of you are not in Moodle yet? Anyone in Moodle? Everyone in Moodle? So if you are not in Moodle, right, please let me know I will add you in. So in Moodle, there are a lot of um, in useful information. Yeah, very useful information you should find. So let's go to our Moodle page. Okay, so um, I just taught this course last semester. So the setting of this course was pretty much the same as last semester. Okay. Um, so, so this is your textbook, and then I put some suggested reading here. I also put the file of your textbook inside this uh, resources area. This resources area not only contains textbook, solution manual, okay? Uh, I also put last year lecture notes here if you want to have some pre read. Uh, pre read is very important, okay? Because if you don't know the concept and then you just come in, I will confirm you, you will be blurred, okay? So I taught two classes last semester, okay? So one class did better than the other. Why? I asked them why, okay? They did pre reads before they come and they even do some of the exercise, okay? I don't expect you to understand everything when you read it, but at least you have an idea what's going on. Okay, you don't need to understand. You just see what is the object I'm trying to uh, explain. Okay. okay. And then uh, some other stuff I might explain to you later. Yeah. So let's go. Okay, here, this tree forum here. Okay, this tree forum here is very important. So first forum is uh, announcements. Okay, I will add make important announcements like assignment, exam, and uh, so on here. And uh, student forum, okay, student forum is for your discussion, okay? You can put your question on top and then the other classmate can answer it, okay? Not restricted to the student that you know, but other can help. And then I add one forum here is key sense question time, okay? This is like, you know, in the parliament, you have a prime minister question time. Okay, so you can question me. Okay, if I, you question me, I can answer you online or I bring it to the class and discuss together. Okay. So I also make mistakes. So please point out if you see any mistake. And if you think that it's a mistake, you should just ask. Okay, so one very important course information is here. And then course info. And every problem regarding course, you should refer it to here. And then I'll update it from time to time. Okay, so this academic session is 2023 slash September. Okay. And then the credit value hour uh, value is five. Why is it five? This represents the face-to-face -face, uh, meeting with me. Okay, five hours. Okay, my name. And my office is A4448. Okay, why my office is important? Because I have an office hour. Okay, I have an office hour. So tentatively now for now I put Thursday 10 to 12. Okay. And Friday 1 to 3. Okay, could you help me to check your schedule now? Does this two times clashes with your schedule? Thursday 10 to 12 and then Friday 1 to 3. Sorry? No. no? Both okay. Okay. Both okay. Cool. Okay. Good. What did I put Friday? I think this is the old time, is it? Yeah, this is the old time. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot to change from my last. Uh... So, what's, your, what's my new? You still remember? Okay. Uh, I remember one. It's a Wednesday 10 to 12 after the abstract algebra class. And then Thursday is from, uh, I think it's before your class. When's your Thursday? 
Oh, one more I put one. Wait, what's this? Oh, okay. Thursday three to five. Okay, yeah, wait. So um, let me put up the time again. See, it does this clash just with your time? But anyway, I know the time I put out just now doesn't clash with you, so maybe it will become an option later. So let me let me let me show you this new time. Okay. Wednesday ten to twelve. Thursday three to five. How about this two time? Okay, so Wednesday doesn't work. How about Thursday? Does it work? Okay, okay. So uh, which which timing is good for you? What do you think? Can you suggest the time? Thursday morning. Monday afternoon. Thursday morning. Okay. Monday afternoon. Thursday morning. Uh, how about Friday? That's all. So afternoon three. Okay, Friday afternoon. After one game. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So this one after eleven. Okay. All right. Um, I I'll make decision because. I still have another class to take care of. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, so so for my office hour, right? Before you come, you just let me know, right? Okay, because I don't want to sit there. Because typically, when I sit there, no one comes. Okay, so you just beforehand you message me or email me, and then I will be in the office. Okay, so what's the learning outcome for this course? Okay, you need to comprehend the theories, concept, and method in abstract algebra. <laughs> what is abstract algebra? Okay, I forgot to close this. Uh, how? <laughs> this is a second year course. Okay, so this is correct. So our course is calculus two. Okay, calculus two is about vector calculus. So we have to comprehend the concept and method of infinite series and Multivariable calculus, okay, compute infinite sums, partial derivatives, multiple integrals, or vector integrals correctly. Okay, so this will be done throughout the course. Okay, throughout the course. Identify the correct strategy to solve a problem related to multivariable calculus. Synthesis applications of multivariable calculus using a broad range of information and digital technologies. Explain the applications of multivariable calculus coherently, I think, and professionally in appropriate language. Okay, so these are the textbook content suggested reading. Okay, so why I put out so many references? Okay, typically when you read some book, okay, you don't understand. Okay, if you don't understand, you cross check, cross reference. Okay, sometimes you will understand more. Okay, this is how um, we learn stuff. Yeah, you listen to one guy say you don't understand, you listen to the other guy say, you listen to the other person say, and then you gather all the information together. Okay. Yeah, this is right. Okay, so um the content here we will typically follow last year, last year flow. So we start with sequences, series, and power series. So you can see the chapter number there. Okay, these are the same label on your steward book. Chapter 11, sequences, series, and power series, and then we will jump to forest series. And then we start with uh, vector stuff, parametric equation and polar coordinates, harsh PD, partial derivatives, multiple integrals, vector functions, vector calculus. Okay. The big beast is the vector calculus. Okay, let's jump into this assignment. So we would have uh, three take-home assignments. Uh, it's on uh, 
the deadline is on Wednesday, weeks 4, 6, and 12. Okay, the submission will be on Moodle. Yeah, and then two latex projects. Okay, you will have two latex projects. Uh, due in uh, Thursday, Tuesday, week 10, 14, 10 and 14. Uh, presentation. Okay, so I increased the presentation time to 2.5 minutes because since you have a little class here, okay, so we will maybe take out one lecture to do this uh, presentation. Okay, our test is a two hour test, okay. Testing week one to week five. So week eight, so please take note on your calendar, week eight, there'll be a midterm. And the final exam is 40% uh, for two, two hours, and then it's everything after the midterm. So these uh, assignments, right, uh, the number of assignment assessment I gave is uh, taking notes of your um, of your degree, I mean, of your semester here. Because I think your first year, second long semester is very super busy. Okay, based on what I know from last batch. Is it busy or not? Do you have a, not, a lot of assignment? Yeah? MPU and your other courses. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just now is the class I'm not sure yet. Oh, you're not sure yet? Okay, I can tell you, you have a lot of assignments. <laughs> okay, so please, please organize your time well. Okay, organize your time well. Okay, take care of your take care of your weight after case someone. Okay, yeah. So please uh, organize your time well. Okay, please organize your time well. Okay, take notes of this uh, time. Uh, deadline. Again, deadline is very important. And then, um, yeah, so typically I will give you around two weeks, okay, one week and a half plus two weeks time to uh, do this uh, assignment. I'll release it before. Okay, so for assignments, right, um, you can discuss, okay, you can collaborate with your friend, okay, but don't copy. Write in your own word. Okay, write in your own word. And then you write down who you collaborate with. Okay, so if you found material online or what, or theorem somewhere else, you need to cite it. Okay, cite everything. Just need a line, not need a formal slide outside. You just say, ah, I collaborated with uh, my friend. Okay, yeah, just write down the thing. If you don't write, if you don't say these uh, uh, references, okay, and then I found out you have the same answer with someone else or online, then I will um, mark you as a plagiarism. Okay, and then I will be done mark. Is it clear? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so um, so all these uh, material or plain is a uh, tentative, also subject subject uh, subject to change. Okay, based on the based on situation. Okay, based on our class case. Uh, uh, for uh, for project, right, I will go into details later, but uh, let me tell you some information first. Okay, so for project one, where is the due date? Okay, I made it due at 10. Okay, I made it due at 10. Uh, so what you can prepare for now is listen carefully to the lecture. Okay, you need to find topics within the lecture. Okay, so how to find topics within a lecture? So, for example, if there's some subject, okay, I touch on but I don't go deep into, okay, you can take that as your project. Okay, you expand on your project. Is it okay? Okay, so you expand the theory inside your project. Or I didn't provide a proof. Okay, you can prove it in your project. Okay, so project one is quite free. So I want to. Uh, cultivate your uh, interest toward maths, okay? And then try to uh, improve your mathematical uh, skill. Okay, I don't go into detail yet, but uh, maybe I'll do it next lecture. But this is the idea of first project. 
Uh, second project, okay, so first project is more towards like a pure maths. Okay, so you need to solve pure maths question then or do maths theory then. Okay, but for second project, it's more of a real life application. Okay, so you can think of it as a continuation from your first project. It's possible. So maybe, what is the example I can give? Huh? Bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. Uh, uh, how about, for example, Fibo, does anyone know Fibonacci sequence or not? Only few, few. Okay, it's okay. Um, yeah. So, um, okay. So let me tell you one thing. So, like for example, Fourier series. Okay, Fourier series is a mathematical theory. But, for example, Fourier series can be used in a sine wave technology. Okay, for example, airports, like your friends here who are wearing here. Yeah, you get yeah. yeah, airports. Okay, airports uses a uh, Fourier series, okay, to do the active noise cancellation. So, how does it work? Okay, you can write it up in the second project. Okay, so find real life application towards the uh, mathematical theory. Okay. And then, uh, hey, did I tell you you need to do one presentation here? You have project and presentation. You will, you will see that we have a lot of assessment here. It's because your credit hour is really long, five hours. Okay, so you have a lot of assessment. Okay, so you need to do a presentation. So this presentation is an interesting part of this course. Okay. So, um, for last year, last year I asked them why they do maths. Okay, so they need to answer this question. Which one of them? Yeah, I haven't decided for your year yet, but um, I'll just put it on first. Okay, I'll try and think of one uh, interesting question and then uh, get you guys to answer it. Okay. Is it clear? Any question about the course setting? Any question? Please don't be afraid to ask. Uh, just ask. Uh, if you think that uh, you're asking question, right, you will interrupt my floor, don't worry. Okay, I will stop you if I don't have enough time. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you just try and interrupt me as uh, frequent as possible. Okay, uh, did I tell you my email yet? So my email is my uh, first name dot my last name, okay, at fsmu.edu.my. Yeah. Let me see if I have any more to tell you. Okay. Um, yeah. So any question on this uh, course setting here about assessment stuff? Maybe I'll talk a little bit more on project one um, on uh, what's it? Okay. Yeah, before we mention stuff. Yeah, because now there's no content, so nothing for me to talk about. Yeah. After I teach one lecture, and then we'll see. Any, any question? No? Um, do we take a break or we go a bit longer and then we take a break? Oh, I didn't tell you, right? So, um, so on each hour, about 40 minutes lecture, oh, Okay, so you can ask me questions and then we can interact. And then 10 minutes tutorial. Okay, this is uh, in between lecture. Okay, and then 10 minutes per every uh, hour. So uh, my lecture is quite free. Okay, what, what do I mean by free? So when you ask me questions, right, maybe you uh, made me diverted. Okay, maybe I think that it's very important. Then I will include uh, the point into our lecture notes. Okay, so, so the lecture notes is between you and me. So I have a like, main notes that I want to cover. Maybe you diverted me to other places. I want to cover something, but you are interested in something else. Then we can uh, merge around. Okay, so that you will benefit and then I will also benefit. Does it make sense? Okay, so I'm not kind of lecturer that uh, I just give you, give you, give you, give you, and then you eat, you eat, you eat. Okay, I'm not trying to spoon feed you. Okay, you won't get spoon feed for me anyway. Okay, so you need to try and work hard yourself. Okay, everyone should work hard 
on your own basis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this course, right, I have a lot of resources if you want to do, right? So I already put on the Moodle if you notice. There are pre-read notes, again, pre-read, press, uh, past year notes. Uh, there are uh, tutorial questions. I will update if it is not following our call. Uh, for the uh, tutorial question, there are answer behind your textbook. Okay, although there are no set, but you can check your final answer. And I also posted out another book. Okay, Adams. Okay, Adams has uh, I put out solution for Adams, so you can learn from there if you like. And then what else? Yeah, tutorial question. Okay, tutorial question I put typically on the week, uh, inside the week. You can follow these uh, keyword, which section, which question. Okay, Adams, you can do as many as you like. Keyword also. But th this one that I point out is uh, the skill that you have to learn in this course. Of course, you can challenge yourself, finish all of them. Okay. If you want to be a mathematician in particular, please do as many as possible. Uh, okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of resources for you. Okay. For this course. So if you want to excel, you definitely can. Last semester, I got one student. He got uh, 29 in the midterm. You want to guess what he get in the final? Huh? What? You have uh, want to guess? 29 midterm. Do you want to guess how many he get in the final? No? No? I have 92. Two and nine swap. Okay, so it's possible. So uh, don't give up on yourself. Okay, please work hard. And I, I'm here to help you. Okay, I'm paid to help you. Okay, no, you pay me to help you. Uh, right, I get your uh, money. Right, okay, so uh, make full use of your money, right? Mm, maybe, yeah. Maybe I go a bit longer and then we take a break. Okay, so. Let me tell you uh, how some overview and some structure of my lecture. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in my lectorial style, okay. So typically, when I introduce some theory, first I will start with some motivation or questions that we like to know, and some maybe some observation that happens, and then from these uh, observation, we try to cook up some definitions and axiom. Okay. So. We can cook up bad axiom, bad definition, but bad definition lead us to nothing. So we have to come up with a good definition. Okay, good definitions, then there must be some example to support it. Okay, otherwise, why we, we want to work with such a theory, right? So we must have some examples in mind, but non examples sometimes is helpful to help us understand the definitions. Okay, you all study discrete math, right? So this word should be quite familiar. Okay, so now we are using it. So from this definition, we want to uh, develop some theorems, propositions, lemma to help us uh, understand properties of the mathematical objects. Okay. So what are these three words? Do you know what's the difference between these three words? No, 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 no idea. Okay. So these three words have a similarity. So they are statement. Okay. Statement in mathematics is either true or false. Okay. Uh, surprisingly, they are true. Okay. In fact, they are true. Okay. So they are proven true statements. So these are proven true statements. So you might ask, hey, why is three words for this same true statement? Okay. So typically, when we talk about theorems, it's some very important statement. Okay. Proposition may be less important. Okay. And lemmas, lemmas are the theorem. Uh, I would say lemma. I should say lemma is a statement that are proven before we prove the theorems and proposition. Because when we in the middle of proving some statement, maybe you want to get the other statement to be right first, and then we call it a lemma. Okay. So, uh, you don't think don't don't you think that the lemma is not important because in history there are some important lemma, for example, Gauss lemma, okay, named after some uh, important mathematician. Okay, so theorems, propositions, and lemmas. 
And then five, uh, in this course, um, we don't have too many proof, okay? I mean, depend on your level. Uh, I need to see what's your level first. So maybe I won't put, put too much, okay? But some idea sketch, okay, you need to know. And um, um, yeah, okay, so we will put a little bit of proof I'm going to let you try the flavor of a pure max because I'm trained under pure max, so uh, I'm more familiar with proof. So don't ask me about finance stuff. I don't know. Statistics, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there are a few kinds of proofs. So direct proof, contradiction, or contrapositive. And then number six. Okay. So sometimes I will introduce notation, maybe some explanation, remarks, and aside to the uh, theorems. Okay. So Typically, when you think think about theory, please think it this way, okay? When I tell you definition, in your mind, you should have some motivation at the back or something you want to solve. And then to convince you know the definitions, you need to know the examples, okay? For example, I tell you, uh, something is very sweet. What thing can you think of? Sugar. Have yeah, sugar, but other might think otherwise. Maybe honey, right? Okay, so just keep one example inside your mind. Okay, I know something very sweet. Maybe it's like honey, or maybe it's like uh, sugar, maybe it's like sweet. Okay, yeah, so you must have one concrete, at least one concrete example in your mind when we talk about definition. Okay, so. If I happen don't give you the example, you should uh, ask me, and then I will give you. I should give you. Okay. Um. What else? Let me see. Okay, so lecture notes is very important in this class. Huh? Uh, I'll say um, it's a bible or it's a constitution. Okay, it's a constitution to this course. Meaning, everything that's right or wrong depend on my lecture notes. Okay, so if you found any mistake, you should correct me. Okay, so I wrote a few uh, equations here. So, which equation you think this is right? Right now. Which uh, equation? Yeah, like this. That's correct. Okay, I'll let you think about one minute. Yeah. Try and see these uh, four equations here. Yeah. Which one is correct? Do you think it's obvious? Obvious, huh? Again, so who can tell me which one is correct? Huh? Which one is correct? Sorry? A, any other answer? No objection. A and B. Okay, A and B. Any other solution? You? Oh, it depends. It depends. It depends. If I think about uh, or something like that one class, one equals to that, so I can say also C is correct. Right? So why is it? When, when is it one plus one equals to 10? Okay, yeah, so C is correct in binary. Okay, so A is uh, obviously true because that's the definition of two. Okay, like your friend say, C may be correct. Okay, C may be correct in a binary sense. Does anyone know how to compute in binary? The binary expression for two is one zero. How about B and D? Correct. Huh? Exclusive or? Okay, in the Boolean algebra, D is correct. How about B? Uh, you said B is correct, right? So you need to give a reason. Why is that algebra? Why? Okay, modulus 2. Yeah, number theory. Okay, modulus 2. Okay. 
So um, when you see some statement you, that you think is not true or not false, you should straight away call out. Okay. And then some statement that's seemingly false can be true sometimes. Okay, depend on what uh, situation you have. Okay, so you need to be very sure which uh, world you are living in. Okay, which world you are living in. And then, why is it true? You need to give me an answer. Okay, this is uh, how it works in mathematics. Okay, you cannot just say, oh, false. I see this is false. False. True. True. Cannot. Why true? Why false? Okay, true, you need to prove it. False, you need to give a counter example. Okay. Okay, uh, let me give an overview of uh, vector calculus and then we will take a break. So, uh, let me give you an overview for this course. Okay. Do you all know how to do Riemann sum on function, real function, like differentiate? Function, integrate function. Okay, so those are called Riemann sum. Okay, Riemann integration. Okay, so let me let me draw for you. All right, so let me just do an overview of this course. Okay, so in your high school, right? Okay, you should learn how to differentiate function from R to R. Yeah, so you got a function from R to R. And then you know how to integrate this function. It is the area under the function, right? Okay. Did you learn the Riemann sum in uh, calculus one? Yes. Okay. So you learn the box thing, is it? Taking limit. Okay. So we will do a higher dimensional level in this course. Okay. So what's uh, about vector calculus? So now we are just doing on the R2. R2. Okay. So we need to make our dimension higher. Okay. We don't just live in a two dimensional space now. Okay. We live in a three dimensional space and higher. Okay. Let us draw three dimensional because uh, we can't really imagine four dimensional now. Okay. But if you happen to know how to imagine four dimensional, you should definitely let me know. Okay. Okay, so let me put here x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y. Okay, so in three dimensional, we also can put this this line, uh, going into the space. Okay, and then we can use technique to integrate this line. Okay, and then this line will also represent the area. This area looks like a curtain. Okay, this looks like a curtain. Here. Does it look like a curtain to you? Can you imagine what I draw here? Yeah. So you imagine there's a particle, okay? So go, go around in the space and trace out a path, okay? And then you can look at the area under this path, okay? So this is like tracing out a curtain. Can you imagine that? Okay, so how to do this? Okay, we will do it in this course. Uh, this is the thing we call line the group. Okay, uh, so we don't uh, fix ourselves to this kind of uh, function. We also have a function like, okay, we can also have a function like a 2D function, okay? We can also imagine how, uh, how a cloth, okay, how a cloth sitting inside uh, two dimensional, uh, three dimensional space, okay? So maybe we have something like this. Okay. So how a cloth setting sitting inside the three dimensional space. Okay. Yeah. Uh how should I draw it? So let me finish this part here. Okay. Uh, does it make sense on or you confused already? <laughs> uh, okay, so let me let me let me take some paper for you to imagine. So I got this cloth right. Okay, so how does cloth sit inside three D space? Okay, you can sit like this. Okay, you also can sit like this. Okay, so this is why I'm trying to draw there, but I think my drawing is not too good. Okay, yeah. 
So if you're going to integrate this function here, okay, so you fill the space under this cloth here. So what do you get? Okay, in our case, maybe we'll get something like a mountain. Okay, we'll get something like a mountain. Yeah. Okay. Does it make sense? You fill out, you fill out the space under the cloth. Okay. Make sense? Does it make sense? Or someone goes? Please let me know if you're lost. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, what's uh, important about this? So um, we normally look at this uh, area, okay? So we can look closer, okay? We look closer into this graph here, okay? We can look at how slow, how slanted is this surface, okay? So on your, on your, the floor you are sitting on, okay? Is it flat or is it slanted? Flat, why is it flat? Why not build it slanted? Otherwise, you will fall to the lower side because of gravity. Okay, so uh, the gradient is very important here. So uh, when we look at the gradient, right, so we can draw some uh, space around here. So in particular, let us look at the simplest uh, uh, R case. Okay, maybe let me move this guy here. Okay, so I got this function here. Okay. So uh, I can look at the tangent line at the point x equals zero, just like this. Yeah, so this is the tangent line to this uh, function. Let's call it y equals to x squared. Okay. Sorry, plus one, maybe. So this is uh, opposite, so I need to put a minus. Minus x squared plus one. Okay, minus x squared, and I move it up, maybe by one. So let's label this one. Okay. So the tangent line at x equal to zero is that. Anyone have objection to this tangent line? Any objection? No, okay. So uh, actually from this tangent line, we can recover actually, recover our curve. Okay, so how to recover our curve? So one is a curve line, one is a horizontal line. How, how to make them the same? What do you think? You have a curved line, you have a horizontal line. Okay, I can maybe I pass you two strings, right? There's a fixed curved line, there's one horizontal line that you can alter. So, what, what can you do? Sorry, you can move it, right? Okay, you can move it, you can move this uh, line to the curved line. Okay, you can move it. So, how to move it mathematically here? Okay, so we can move it. By adding, you see, so there are differences between other points than the point at s equals zero, right? So at every point, you can add enough length to get to the curve line, right? Okay, so maybe you can add it slowly, okay? Maybe you add to this line, and then you go slowly, go to this line, and then slowly, okay? If you add enough term, hopefully you can converge to the original function, okay? So we have to add enough term to get to the uh, function that we want. And this uh, will start our first chapter on the sequence series, okay? So we, why we learn series sequence at the first place? Because we want to deal with these kind of objects. If you heard Taylor series before, this is exactly what is going on, okay? So our first chapter, we'll start with sequence series. Okay, look at infinite sum. Okay, infinite sequence. Okay, sequence have to be infinite. Sequence and then infinite sum. And then when does they, when do they converge? Okay, because one plus two plus three plus four plus five diverge. So what kind of sum converge? Okay, we are interested in. Okay, in the first topic. Okay, any question? No? Okay, if no, maybe let's take a break for 10 minutes, 3, 5, 6, and then we will come back at 3, 5, 6. Okay. 
拜拜，明天见。对，十年，变成负五十年了。我要去。十年去。八十年，我进超版了。哈哈哈哈哈。对，我才刚带来。哈哈哈哈哈。OK， 拜拜 ，Thank you，Thank you。好，我冰酸牛奶。那我给你们。Yeah， just move on。啊？你加二。嗯，我看啊，就好像我出进去之后，他还要有一个一路的跳。这儿给你发过了。OK。OK。喂喂喂。我也受不了。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。嗯。
Hello, testing. Okay, uh, before we start the class, I want to know your name and then I will take attendance. Yeah. Um, I know who is Guo Fan Ye. Guo Fan Ye, okay. Liu Yuan, okay. Jing Sen, Tan Jing Sen, okay. Uh, Li Quan Jack. Ivan Gun, Lies Larry Kong, Lo Hao, Lui Zhong Yi, Xi Chiao Dong, Zhen Kang, De Yi Xing, Yuan Ro Shan, Ho Han Wei. Zeno Nicholas. Zeno Nicholas. Does anyone know him? Or her? Okay. He left. Indonesian or what? Left to where? Indonesia. Or Hong Kong. Okay, okay. Lee Sydney. Okay. Kang Yen Ru. Okay. Anyone I haven't called yet? Did I call everyone here? Okay, so Okay, so your class got 19 person. I think so. Okay. Hmm. Why that guy left? I think we should start now. Uh, maybe it took, took some time for me to remember your name. So yeah. I think make some kind of familiar with you. Anyone know why he left? <laughs> Hello? How about we wait for one more minute, two more minutes? Wait. 
Who is your lecturer for the other courses? Huh? Hey, who are you? Oh, you retake. Did you email me? You email me? Who, who are you? When, when did you email me? Oh, you messaged me. Okay. 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 Wait. 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 So, so why are you not here in the first hour? First hour, I'm doing some other big business. I'm saying like FYP. Okay. 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 All right. Um, yeah. OK, so I think we should uh, start. Going to the real business now. So for my course, right, uh, you don't need to uh, do. Hey, before that, you haven't answered my question yet. So who is your other lecture? Arash, and then. OK, ultimately, what, what course are playing out, Jubra? OK. Okay. 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 So for my course, right, you don't need to uh, do notes. Okay, you don't need to copy. Okay. What I want you to do is you pay attention to what I wrote and what I said. Okay. If I say something wrong or something you don't understand, you should point out immediately. Okay. We want to solve it inside this class. Okay, so you don't go out, you don't need to uh, think anymore. Okay, so pay attention to the class and then we will solve inside the class. So make your time more effective. Okay, so let's start with uh, our business here, chapter 11, sequences and internet series. So we will deal, we will start with uh, sequence. Okay, so what are sequence? So, there's one uh, easy sequence that you should know, okay? Ever since your kindergarten. You know what is it? Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so what is the, why is it? What's the set is? This is the set of natural number, okay? So very important, all the sequence grow from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so let's see what do I mean by every sequence is just uh, one, two, three. Okay, so I need to give a definition of a sequence. Okay, in mathematics, every word must have a definition. Okay, when we refer to a word, we mean, we mean the definition. Okay, not the word, but the definition. Okay, so if I say a sequence is, okay, the most important thing is not the sequence, it's the thing behind the is. Okay, the behind the thing, Behind the is will tell you what is the sequence is. Okay, so don't when you first heard the mathematical term, don't try and uh, think that the word is what you are thinking. Okay, you can try and guess, but to be precise, you need to get the definition. Okay, so what's the sequence? So a sequence typically we will denote by a one, a two, a three, a three comma a four, and so on. Okay, is a list of numbers okay. written in a definite form. Okay, so you can see that instead of one, two, three, four, okay, I attach an A, okay, one, two, three, four become a subscript. Okay, so meaning I can attach different number on one, on two, on three, on four. Okay, so what do I mean by that? That I will show you an example. So sometimes, okay, sometimes we denote the sequence by uh, a set of a n, okay, n going from one to infinity, or just a n set of a n. Okay. Also, 
uh, we will call a n the n term. Okay. So what other examples of sequence I can give? Okay. So for example, I can say one, four, seven, ten, thirteen. You want to guess what's the next one? Sixteen. Okay. Sixteen. Okay. So you can see that I attach to one as one, two as four, three as seven, four as ten. Okay. But typically we're interested in a sequence that has uh, a pattern. And for example, what's the pattern of this sequence here? Plus three to the previous one, right? Okay. So uh, one way we can write this uh, this form is I can say I start with one. Okay, I start with first term one, and then the following term is just the previous term plus three. Okay, this is another way to write uh, my sequence. Okay, what is this called? This is called the recursive recursive formula. If you're going to proceed longer your career in computer science, recursive uh, stuff is very important and very useful. Okay. Okay. What's the another way to write this uh, sequence? What's another pattern of this sequence? Can you find 3n minus minus n minus 1 minus 2 where, where your n start? Start from 1, 3n minus 2. Okay. When n is equal to one. What what is this term? This term is one. Okay. How about n equals two? Is four. Okay. Yeah. So you can try and verify that this sequence. Another way to write this sequence down is three n minus two. Don't try and think about it. Try three, try four, try five. Okay, but even though you only check finitely many terms of it, right? So one technique you need to uh, you might want to include here is a uh, mathematical induction. Okay, did you learn mathematical induction in this group? Right? Okay, so you can use mathematical induction to prove that uh, these are in fact the same. Uh, define the same sequence okay yeah so you can try and do it yourself okay. if you don't do maybe i'll put into your assignment yeah. yeah try and work it out okay yeah all right so let's do some uh, tutorial question here okay let me give you some example so i'll try and find so i'll try and find First, second, third, third. sequence. Okay, so I will give you four sequence. Try and work out the first four terms. Okay. And try and work out the first four terms here. Can I give you about three minutes? Okay. Try and work out the first four terms for these four sequences here. Okay. And then we will discuss. Okay. Can you see? You need bigger. Can I work out the first four terms for these four sequences?
Uh, just let me know if you can't see the blackboard, okay? And then I'll enlarge my handwriting or I enlarge the box. Okay, work out already. Anyone done? Done yet? Already? Already. Okay, so let's see. So, what is A1 here? What is A1? Zero. Okay, so why is it zero? So, you just plug n equals to one. Okay, one minus one over one is one minus one, which is zero. Okay. Similarly, you plug 2 into your uh, n to find the second term of your sequence. In this case, you get half. Okay. And then the third term, you get 2 third. And then the fourth term, you get 3 over 4. Okay. So this is the first four term for a. How about b1? What is b1? b1 is also 0. Okay. So you can see that there's an alternating minus one here. Okay, so this minus one is minus one when n is odd, is uh, one when n is even. Okay, so there's an alternating sign here. So for the first one, you get one plus minus one times one over one, which is zero. How about B2? You get one plus minus one to the power two times half, which is three over two. Okay, and then B3, you should get. 2 over 3, good. B4? Oh, B4. Okay, good. Does everyone got the same answer? Okay, please check. Okay, how about C? Let's call it CN here. Okay, what is C first term? Zero? How do you get zero? It's minus two over three. Okay, so you should be take note that okay, our first term here is no longer one. Okay, it's starting from three. Okay, so the first term is actually C three. Okay, so C three is minus one cube plus one over three, which is minus two over three. Okay, how about C four? Over four. Good. C five minus. 4 over 5, good. C6, 7 over 6. Okay, good. Good. How about D? Let's call it the D, D and Ren. What is D1? 0. How about the other? Any other answer? All 0. D1 is 0. How about D2? Sorry? What did you say? 999. Okay, I think I wrote something wrong. <laughs> it should be a dot here, not a comma. Okay. So it's a 0 0.999. Okay. So in this case here, this is a, you know, what is it? Yeah, constant. Okay, this is a constant sequence. Okay. So all the D are just. 0.999. Yeah. Um, I think it doesn't make sense to write just like this. Okay. I think it doesn't make sense because our sequence is infinite. I cannot just give you only two. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. And then uh, two terms is not enough to build the pattern. Yeah. So I, we, we need more terms to build that. Okay, so uh, it doesn't make sense to write 0 and 999. Okay, so this is uh, something rubbish. Okay, yeah, so it should be a 0 0.99. So this is what we call a constant uh, sequence. There's only one term, 
Okay, you repeat for infinitely many times. Okay, so this is a constant sequence. Okay, let's try another uh, sequence. Okay, so let's try another sequence. So let's try and find a formula for this uh, following sequence. Okay. So I'll explain what we have to do and then I'll let you discuss. Okay, so our first term is 3 over 5. Second term is minus 4 over 25. And then 5 over 125. Minus 6 over 6 to 5. 7 over 3, 1, 2, 5. Okay, so we are trying to find the general term. Okay, meaning we want to find a n. How to express a n? So what is a n here? Okay, so like what I say, every sequence, every sequence grew out from a natural number sequence. Okay. So meaning you need to find a way to map uh, the natural number to this uh, uh, num uh, the term in the sequence. Okay. So in other words, what is a n? A n is actually a function. Okay. Function from where to where? Function from natural number to real number. Okay. We can accept any real number here. Okay. Uh, Irrational number, a uh, rational number is in real, right? Okay, so this is a sequence. So, um, so since you are sitting in a group setting, so I want you to talk to each other. Okay, tell your friend what's your name, and then discuss to each other, and then find the a n. Okay, I give you another three minutes. Yeah, yeah, discuss with your friend, check with your friend. Yeah, please make noise. Okay. Huh? Find a n. You need to find a n formula for a n. Real number sequence. No, I already gave you the real number sequence here. Yeah. 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 yeah, you need to give a formula when you start n equals to one, give you the first term, n equals to two, give you the second term. Okay. Yeah. Try and discuss with your friend what's the pattern lying inside the sequence. Yeah. Yeah, someone needs to start to get Okay. 
Okay, done. Anyone got the answer? Okay. Uh, someone shout out what's their answer. And it's going to work. Okay, so from uh, what's your name again? Hang Wei, okay, let Hang Wei say first. Okay. Multiply or plus or well, multiplies, okay, n plus two over five. M plus two. Okay. M plus two over five. Like this? Okay, okay. M plus two. Five. Okay. N start from where? One. Bigger than equal to one. Okay. Yeah. So you see that just now, if start with different M, you will get different answer, right? Okay. So in this case, we want N equals one. Okay. Anyone got objection to this answer? Or everyone got the same thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good. So next, um, next up, okay, uh, introduce the most uh, important sequence in this uh, chapter. Okay. So this is the Fibonacci sequence. Okay. So what's the Fibonacci sequence? So this sequence start like this. So one, so the first term is one, second term is also one, okay? And then two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, and so on, okay? So this is the Fibonacci sequence. So I want you to give a recursive formula. Do you still remember what the recursive formula is? Or uh, what's the name? What's the name? Genjet. So we call you Gen Z. Wait, wait, let me see how you spell your name. Gen. Yeah, how to spell your name. Gen Z. Li Ya. Oh, Li Chen Z. Okay. So Li Chen Z. So, um, yeah, so can you tell us what the recursive formula is? Okay, so that's just a specific example. Okay, so what's the recursive formula? So meaning this formula depends on previous term. Yeah, so since it depends on previous term, you keep going backward, right? Okay, but there must be some starting point. Okay, so you must start somewhere. Okay, where's the somewhere you have to start? The first term. Okay, the first term you need to start. Okay, and then you define your formula in terms of this first term. Okay, so uh, you want to have a guess how to build this? Huh? No idea? Any idea? A1 equals 1. Okay, so this is the first step we should step. Okay, we should step on first term is equal to 1. So how to define the next term? Huh? Okay, you think that one is not enough to build this uh, sequence, okay? In fact, we need two of them as our base base sequence, okay? So we will set A2 equals to one also, okay? This is enough to build our sequence now. How? One plus a n minus two. So this n start from where? Three. Okay. So meaning one and two are fixed first. Okay. And then the terms onwards, we will add the previous two terms. Okay. So you can try and verify that this is indeed true. Okay? At least in this uh, finite number. Okay. So this is the recursive formula that gives the uh, Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so this is the formula that gives the Fibonacci sequence. But um, 
There's another way to write this down. Okay, you can verify yourself. Okay, I'll give you this formula here. And can be written as 1 over square root 5 times 1 plus square root 5 over 2 to the power n minus 1 minus square root 5 over 2 to the power n. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So there's something to do with golden ratio here. So golden ratio is 1 over square root 5 over 2. And um, plus minus square root 5. I'll get both of the golden ratio. So um, scale by 1 over square root 5. Okay. You have to first convince yourself first. Okay. Start n equal to 1. Is it true that you get 1? 2. Do you get 1? Okay. And so on. Okay. Um, uh, we won't do this. Uh, we won't show this in class. So uh, maybe uh, you can choose it to be your project one. Okay. To show this, uh, why Fibonacci sequence can written as this, or maybe I will throw into your assignment question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For project, right? Uh, once you pick a topic, you have to. Come and talk to me, and then I'll agree that you can work on it. Okay? Yeah. So, this might be a possible project question if I don't choose it to do within the class uh, assignment, maybe. Okay? So, you can pick this as your project. Okay, so any uh, question on the sequences, uh, the X? Definition of sequence, example of sequence, the way we express sequence. So there are three ways to express. One way, you can list every number down. Second way, tell me the formula of a n, okay? And then I can plug n equals to one, two, three, and then work out the terms. Third way, we can use recursive formula. Okay, tell me the first few terms, and then I build my sequence using these terms. Okay, so these are three ways to stand up. Any any uh, problem with sequence? Do you have a sequence in your mind already? Okay, so you must have at least maybe constant sequence. Okay, very important constant sequence. Put in type, put into your mind. Fibonacci sequence, put into your mind. Okay, when people talk about sequence, what are sequence? Okay, tell people maybe constant sequence, Fibonacci sequence, or any sequence. Okay. I think actually you found a lot of sequence in the kindergarten books, right? They ask you to guess the pattern. Okay. okay. Uh, what time is it? Okay, we still have time. So I'll keep going on. Okay, so now we'll talk about conversion of a sequence. Okay, does this, you can see that the sequence we consider, right? They, some of them are like alternating, okay? Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, alternating. Or, like this Fibonacci is like growing up. Okay, keep growing, keep growing. Uh, and then, yeah, keep growing. Mostly growing. Any decreasing? Not yet. So, mostly are growing. So, does it always grow until infinity? Or it will stop at some stage? Okay, so this is the question we are interested in. Okay, so we will... Um, Introduce the following definition. So we said that a sequence, okay, a sequence is said to have a limit in R. Okay, so this limit is in R. Our a n also live in R. Okay, so we don't go outside real number. So we still stay in real number. So have a limit in R, or we say that it converge. Converge to L. Okay, so these are important objective. So I have a limit L in R or converge to L. Okay, how do we write it? Okay, we will write it as lim of a n when n go to infinity equals to L. Okay. So we see that uh, the term get closer and closer and closer to L. Okay, so how to state it um, mathematically if 
the values of a n get arbitrary close, okay. arbitrarily close to L when n is large enough. Okay, if I if we go further enough and then it get closer and closer to L. Okay, if this is not the case, we will say that uh, a n diverges. Okay, we will say that a n diverges. So how many uh, conditions you will get when an is diverges? So either either the limit doesn't exist, okay? The limit doesn't exist. So you cannot find such L. Okay? You cannot find such L. Or it just diverges to uh, infinity. Okay, diverge to infinity. Uh, why we don't include infinity? Because real line doesn't have infinity. Okay, real line doesn't have infinity. If we add real line, uh, if we add infinity into real line, the real line will close as a circle. Okay, but real line is a line, right? Okay, if I if we add uh, infinity into this line, it will close as a circle. Okay, which we call compactification. Uh, if you plan to take further pure max force. But uh, you know, uh, in general, real line doesn't include infinity. Okay. You cannot find infinity inside your real line. It's not a number. So how to imagine this? Okay. Uh, for me, uh, my max, I like to draw. Okay. I love geometry topology. So I work between algebra and geometry. Okay. So how to imagine this uh, sequence here? Okay. So how should we imagine this sequence here? So let's get yourself a uh, x-axis labeled by the uh, natural number. What did I say just now? What is a n? I say maybe half 15 minutes ago. What is a n? It's a sequence, okay? Moreover, Lisa. Right? It's a set, sure. More, more. A n can be realized as what? Can be realized as what? A function, okay. A function from natural number to real number, okay. So now we got ourselves the top, the domain natural number, okay. We can plot our sequence on top of this, okay. So we can plot it, okay. So maybe we have some sequence like this, okay. So in this case here. We can see that this sequence, when we go far enough, okay, when we go far enough in n, we can see that this sequence here converge to some line L. Okay, this is the number that this sequence converge to. Okay. Have you guys seen the uh, limit definition, the epsilon delta definition? In this one? Yes, yes. Who, who is teaching calculus one? Huh? Or do late? Okay, do late. Sure. Okay. So this uh, this definition uh, this uh, definition here can be rephrased using epsilon delta uh, definition. So let me show you. So for every epsilon greater than zero, okay, that exists uh, n. Okay, this n depend on this epsilon. Okay. So that's an n such that. Uh, for all the n after this n epsilon, okay, our a n will get epsilon close to l. Okay, so um, in this course we won't dive deep into epsilon delta definition. So I just give you a flavor here. Okay, we won't touch a proof of epsilon delta. Okay, so in this course you just need to know. Um, how to find the limit of a sequence. And then, uh, at the other case, you show that limit doesn't exist. Okay, sequence diverges. Okay, you need to give argument. I won't ask you to show, oh, this sequence converts to L. How to find this N? Okay, no, no question on this. 
Okay, so I just give you a flavor here. Okay. Yeah, we will see more later. Okay, but um, but if you want to relate back to your calculus one, this is what you need. Okay, this is the absolute definition of limit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, there's one concept question here. Let me ask you. When I say an is arbitrarily close to L when n get larger, does it necessarily that a n must be equal to L at the end? No. Why? What's your name? Huh? Law. 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 How? Okay. So why you say no? You say like this. So why? Oh, can you give example? Your limit is L, but your a n at far is not L. Can you give an example? This continuous function, so what kind of this function? And I'm sure it's not any number, but that is not an individual, it's just closing to L, right? Not L. Yeah, I want an example. One over N. Okay, so look at one over N. Okay, consider one over N. Let me put a remark here. So let me write down the statement that I want you to see first. So let's say if we okay, limit n to infinity of a n is equal to l, does it necessarily that a n uh, equals to l for large enough n? Okay, so most of you say no and then uh so let me try and recall Hangwei. okay so Hangwei gave an example so one over n so one over n when n go to infinity what does it approach zero but does one over n equals to n for any n for some n why no Like, uh, show me mathematically so let one over n suppose one over n equals to zero yeah okay, what do you get y equals to or oh, before that we get one equals to n times zero which is y equals zero then this is a contradiction Okay, so there's a contradiction. So one over n cannot be zero. Okay. Yeah. So this kind of concept question, right? I want you to think. Okay. Because I will put this into your test. Yeah. You need to think critically. Okay. Yeah. Any any question with this uh, argument here? No. Okay. So the answer here is uh, no. Okay, answer is no. Okay, good. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So next, uh, we need some tools to find limits. Okay. Since we don't have epsilon, uh, epsilon n definition. Okay, we need some tool to help us to show, uh, the sequence type uh, converge to some limit. So uh, we can use what we have learned, okay? You have learned the limit in a real function, right? Function from R to R, you know how to find the limit. Okay, we're gonna use that. So let's say, okay? Let's say we got the an, okay? We got an, uh, what kind of an do we have this now? Okay, maybe I put a an equals to 3n plus one, for example, okay? 
So in this case here, these n are discrete. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Okay, but I can transform it into a function from real to real. Okay, what can I do? Any idea? Yes, okay, so we can consider a function fx, okay, let's call it this function attached to our an, okay, which is equal to 3x plus 1. So we can input real number in as our column of our an, okay. So there are two objects here. So how they correspond? So how they correspond? So there's a theorem, okay, you can look for the uh, proof inside your book if you want. So the theorem here is if we happen, okay, we happen to know the limit of our real function, okay, if we happen to know the limit of our real function, then if we replace our domain with just discrete natural number, they are going to get the converge to the same limit, okay? So this is one way to find the limit of your sequence. So you have a sequence, I don't see it diverge, uh, converge or not. I make it into a real function first, okay? If the real function converge, then the uh, sequence converges. Okay, so let me write down in words what this means. Okay, so one technique you need to learn from mathematics is you need to convert uh, the mathematical expression into words. Okay, and that works into mathematical expression. Okay, so what does this say? What does this theorem say? So if if the limit of the real value function is this, then the limit of the uh, let's say um, positive integer or yeah, positive integer value function okay, equals to its uh, equal. Um, to that of its real value of the part. Okay. So if you can figure out the real the limit of a real value function, then you can figure out the limit of the uh, sequence. Okay. Uh maybe you don't believe me, right? You don't believe me. So let's see an example. It's okay if you don't believe me, but we I need to convince you. So let's find the limit of one over square root n. Okay, let's find what's the limit of this one over square root n. So um maybe you should try a few terms of this sequence first. Okay, what's the few terms you can get from this sequence here? What are the terms you get for this sequence? One, one over square root, two, right? one over square root, three, one over square root, four, one over square root, five. Okay, like what I said, I like to imagine this number geometrically. Okay, let's do let, let's draw some uh, graph. Yeah. Let's draw some graph. So we start with uh, one. Two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Okay, and then uh, what do we have for y value? We have one, uh, one over square root two, one over square root three, and uh, keep going down. Okay, is it true that going down square root n when n get larger is increasing? Right? Remember, remember the square root n. Uh, function here, so square root n like this, so increasing. So when the denominator is increasing, then the fraction is decreasing. 
OK, OK. Yeah. So you must, must be super precise, huh? you know what is going on here. You don't just guessing. Because square root n, square root x is increasing. OK, so the fraction is decreasing. OK, okay. so uh, we can plot this out. So we can plot this, plot this, plot this, and then keep going on. OK. Did you see some trend here? This sequence is, is going down. Okay. So decrease to where? Zero. Can it go to negative or not? Why not? Okay, square root is always positive, so you cannot go to something negative. So one possible guess is zero. Okay, one possible guess is zero. Okay. So the mm, so my theorem tells you that you need to work with real num real function first. Okay, how to make this a real function? Okay, pictorially, what you do is you literally joining this dot using one over square root x. Okay, you are joining this using one over square root x. Okay, so this is what you're trying to do. Okay, so um, I'm not sure you learned in calculus one or not. So what is the uh, uh, what is the limit of x to infinity of one over square root x? Does anyone know? Zero. Okay. So you should be able to show this is zero from uh, calculus one method. Mm, I think the way you show it is uh, okay. Um, yeah. So this is the composition of function that you can use. Okay. So you should check. Okay, you should check back to your calculus one. So how do we show this? Okay, it goes zero. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but you know that one over x, limit of one over x is going to zero, right? Yeah. When x go to infinity. Okay. So when we say limit, limit of a function, limit of a function, right? We need to tell people where the x going to. Because sometimes x go to zero. Sometimes x go to infinity. So if I change x go to zero, what is this limit here? Infinity. Okay. So it's really important to tell people where is the limit going. Okay. So in this case here, so um, since we know the limit of our real value function, then this would imply that this would imply that our uh, limit of our sequence is also zero. Okay, since since what? Since the limit of x go to infinity of square root x is also zero. Okay. And any question with this argument here? Yeah. Uh, please ask. Uh, if you try to keep with your server, you will suffer for fifteen weeks. Okay. Just ask if you don't understand. Any question? No? Okay. So let's do one more uh, example and then we will uh, take a break. Okay. So let's do one more example. So, example, next example. So let's see. Let me ask you does the sequence of minus one to the power n converge? Okay, try and uh, spend one to two minutes to think about this. Okay, if yes, to what number? So the first thing you can do is try and write down a few few terms. Okay, write down a few terms. Uh, does it converge to anything or not? Yeah, some will say no. Huh? But what did you say? You think it's no, so why? You have two answer. How do you have two answer? How can a limit? Uh, how can a? Uh, okay, so 
Mm, it is implicit inside the definition that your sequence cannot converge to two limit. Okay. Um, because if it converts to two limit, uh, you can't have a sequence that arbitrarily close to two different limits. Okay, the limit in, in other words, the limit of a sequence is unique. Okay, you cannot have two limits. Yeah. But you point out a very important observation here actually. Okay, so let me let me let me draw this uh, sequence here first. Let me draw this sequence here. Okay. So I like to draw the sequence. Sometimes it's very helpful. Let me draw this sequence here. So you can see that this sequence here alternate between what number? One and minus one. Okay. So when it is one, you have uh, let me get some even spacing here. So I have minus one, one, minus one, one, minus one, one, and so on. Okay. So the idea was. There's no limit here. Okay, there's no limit here. Okay, this is true because this sequence is alternating between minus one and one. Okay, if you choose any L, okay, any L, you can find far enough n, okay, such that a n is very far from L. Okay, not close to L. Okay, so let me make this statement first, and then we will go to the observation that there's two limit, but two limit. Not limit, okay? Not limit. But I will tell you what is that. Okay. So let me write this down. So since uh, since the sequence alternates between minus one and uh, one, okay, it doesn't it does not converge. Converge. Okay. Uh, we cannot we cannot find why it doesn't converge okay so what what is converge mean okay you need to go back to our definition again okay when uh, a n get arbitrary we can find n far large enough such that it get arbitrary close to l so if it's, it doesn't converge then it's a negation of that statement okay so what's the negation of that statement it means that we cannot find a number, okay, we cannot find that doesn't exist, okay, a number L, okay, that can be made arbitrarily close, okay, arbitrarily close. I'm just reiterate our definition to O A N for N greater than big N by picking large enough. Okay, does everyone uh, agree with this uh, argument here? We cannot find an L. Because if you pick any L, okay, I can find further enough a n such that there, there's a gap that you cannot make smaller. Okay. There's a gap that you can never make smaller. I think it's a little bit abstract here. Do you, do you understand what I say? If you don't understand, you should ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, so if we say something is mm -hmm. some limits are being smaller, that means the gap can become smaller. Yes, the gap can be much smaller. Yes, correct. So this is uh, demonstrated in this um, epsilon delta definition here. Okay. So this gap is true for all epsilon, okay? Why is it true for all epsilon? We don't care about big epsilon, okay? What we care is about small epsilon, okay? I can make this epsilon as small as possible, and then I can find big N, such that everything behind the N is epsilon close to L, okay? So when I say about this, this right, I guess this inequality here, like I tell you, I want to imagine it. So how do you imagine this? So this is an absolute value. So meaning from left, from right, from left and from right, uh, allow. Okay, we can allow positive and negative differences here. So uh, let me draw this uh, picture for you. Okay. So what do I mean by the uh, 
modulus of uh, a n minus l is less than epsilon. Okay, so if I uh, place my real line straight, that's my real line straight. Okay, so let's say this is uh, l. Okay, this is l. Okay, what we can do is our a n. Okay, our a n greater than n epsilon. Okay, for example, n epsilon plus one, n epsilon plus two, n epsilon plus three. Okay, they must be, they must be what? They must be, they must be what? They must be epsilon within epsilon distance. Okay, all the terms a n after n epsilon have the have to be epsilon away from my limit from left and right. Does it make sense or not? Let me put my there's a direction for my real line, okay? Any question? Maybe a bit uh back here. So do you understand why I, why I'm trying to draw here? Okay, let me let me make um. Uh, obvious a little bit so let me how about this is l okay l is a fixed number okay a n is a growing number okay so once we fix l okay a n have to be absolute epsilon difference from my l epsilon difference um how about i give you an example okay example I know because you are first year, you like example, right? Okay. Let me get a statement. A n minus two less than uh, three. Okay. Let's do this. I fix an epsilon. Okay. I fix L already, right? So you can p two. So where is two? Okay. Let's say somewhere here is two. Okay. How about um, a n minus two? Less than three. What does this mean? A n must be lying between minus one to five. Okay, why? Because this is exactly epsilon away. Okay, so your a n must live inside here. So compare these two pictures here. Okay, so um, so this is the power of abstract abstracting uh, ideas, okay? When I talk about this idea here, right? This work for any L, any epsilon, okay? In particular, this one, okay? But, but you are now in a transition period to go to abstract uh, language. So you need to be able to picture this, okay? You must picture this example. That's why when I talk about definition, you should have an example in mind. Always have an example, okay? So, Please uh, go back and uh, compare these two pictures and then convince yourself they are the same. Okay, so let me uh, write, uh, let me write more. So our AN have to live inside here. Okay, all the AN have to live inside here. And so Okay, but in our case just now, our, our, our sequence is fixed between minus one and one. So we cannot get our epsilon less than one for example. Okay. Uh, any question on this part? No? Uh, uh, how about the other part? Okay, I'll leave a uh, last word to what? Uh, what's your name again? Sorry, yeah, what's your name? Ivan. Okay, Ivan, yeah, I have to remember Ivan. So Ivan says that there's two limit. Okay, I say that no, if sequence that converge, the limit is unique. Okay, so what's the business with these uh, two limit here? So obviously, obviously, you can set two subsequence. Okay, and then they converge one to minus one and one to one. Okay, so what's so special about this subsequence here? Okay. If you go further into calculus, which we call analysis, this will be called something called by lim if and lim sup. 
Okay. So there are two of them. One is a limit of increment of your sequence. One is a limit of supremum of your sequence. And then these two number, one of them will converge to minus one, and one of them will converge to one. If lin if is not equal to lin su, then limit doesn't exist. Okay, so this one is a higher uh, notion, higher level notion. Okay, but uh, we won't touch this, but you will see it in a later course. Okay, uh, if no question, let's take another break until 508, and then we'll come back at 508. We'll resume at 508. Okay, uh, any question, we will leave to the last hour. Yes, yes, I will upload the recording. Yeah, so hello. Uh, I will upload the recording for your after class study. It's not for you to skip class, eh? but you can revise if you need. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Okay,
Sí, se I just realized there are two hungry here. Oh, two hungry, so. Okay, and hungry here. Huh? Eaten? Okay, okay. Good. So, do you guys have the same Chinese name? Or... No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, ready? You guys ready? As you ready? Okay. So let's go for the last hour. Okay, so we're gonna introduce the properties of limits of sequence. So the, this two comes in handy.
So what are we trying to do here? Okay. So this is the uh, properties of naming sequence. So what do we have? So let's start with two convergent sequences. So can you recall what's the definition of convergent sequences? When does the sequence converge? Hmm? When does the sequence converge? Hmm? Sorry? A limit? When you take the limit of a sequence when n goes to infinity, you get you get a real number. Okay, you get a real number. So this means that the limit of uh, a n for n goes to infinity converges to something, and b n also converges to something. Okay, maybe they are the same, maybe they are different, but there are some number in, there are some finite number. Okay? Remember that infinity is not included in real. Okay? And let's say we take a constant. Okay? We call it C. Okay? And then we have the following. Okay? We have the following. First, okay, what do we have? Uh, we can take lim of n to infinity of C. So what does this mean? C is a constant. How to take limit of a constant? This is a constant sequence. Okay, so what's the limit of a constant sequence? It's just the constant itself. Okay, it's C. Okay, two. How about we take a convergent sequence, but we multiply C on each of them. So for example, A n is uh, A1, A2, A3, and so on. Okay. So what is C A N? C A N is just C A1, C A2, C A3. Okay. So what should this limit be? C L. Okay. Yes, correct. C L1. Yes, correct. So uh, in fact, in fact, what? In fact, you can uh, commute your constant with your limit sign. Okay, you can commute, you can break the C out. Okay. Uh, one more point is actually C A N also converges. Right? Because C is a constant, L1 is some other constant. Multiply two constants, you get a constant. Okay. So in particular, C A N also converges. So if you multiply a convergence sequence with C on every term, it also converges. Okay. Okay. So what other operation we can do? Okay. Uh, we can just add, okay, add each term or minus each term, okay, respectively. A1 with B1, A2 with B2, A3 with B3, A4 and B4, and so on. Okay. So this conversion. No. No, you say no. <laughs> How about the rest? Any idea? You think should, okay? But well, why you think so? Separate limit. Okay. Okay. So you suggesting that maybe limit can uh, distribute, okay? Distribute with these uh, sequence, okay? Uh, which is indeed true. Okay. You can do this. Okay. You can distribute your uh, limit operation here. Operator. Okay. Uh, how about next? Let's say, okay, I consider A1 minus uh, A1 multiplied by B1, A2 multiplied by B2, and I multiply two sequence together, okay, term by term. Do you think this conversion? Huh? Yes. So what, what should it converge to? L1, L2. Okay, you just, it also, uh, Distribute into the multiplication. Okay, in particular, 
A and B N, the product of A and B N converges. Again, the product sequence. Uh, what else can we do? We can also divide two sequence. Okay, how to divide two sequence? So we just divide A1 by B1, A2 by B2, A3 by B3, A4 by B4, and so on. Okay, so should this converge on? Yes. Yes. How? I want divided by L2. How about L2 is zero? Yeah. So uh, in fact, this uh, converge to lim of a n over lim of and uh, go to infinity uh, b n. If because we are dividing, right, we need to be careful here. So the denominator cannot be zero. But uh, sequence that converts to zero is a lot, right? Because zero is in R. Okay, so you cannot take a sequence that converts to zero. So uh, just now, what we say is just based on our based on our experience or based on our guess. Okay, to show this uh, precisely. You need to go into epsilon definition. Okay, epsilon n definition. Uh, we won't do this in class. So if you're gonna prove it, uh, you can prove in your project if you want to know why is this true. Okay, you can prove in your project. Okay, so this is a possible project uh, topic as well. Okay, so you can make your project and then prove it. Okay. Uh, using a uh, epsilon n definition. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, one thing you can see here, right? Uh, you learned linear algebra, right? Last semester. Okay. So you can see that this link of n to infinity is actually a linear operator, right? You can see that this link transform from sequence to a real number. Okay. So this is an operator. Operator. So I put a remark here. So this limit take sequence. Okay, how do I write sequence? So um, okay, let me write set of sequence first. Okay. Uh, maybe we can write this. Okay, two. Oh, ah. Okay, L is inside R. Right. Does it make sense? Okay, you take a sequence, I split and R. Okay, not just every sequence, it's a convergent sequence. All in my converge. Okay, and then L is the thing that it converge. Okay, and then this is uh, actually a linear operator. Why is it a linear operator? Because you can pull the scalar out, okay, or you can split the sum. Remember what's the linear transformation thing? Definition of linear operator. Anyone remember? No, not don't remember. <laughs> don't remember. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, <laughs> um, okay. So very very important um, definition in the linear algebra of uh, linear transformation. All operator or any function, but the keyword is linear. What's the linear means? Okay. So. Uh, a linear transformation uh, t okay from uh, a vector space you guys learn vector space or not okay vector space v to another vector space w okay is Is a is a what? Is a function. Okay, is a function from v to w that satisfy two properties. Okay, this is very important properties. Anyone remember what two properties you need to satisfy? Hmm? E e bracket. V plus W 
equal to TV plus TW for all. Okay, let me let me add the uh, quantifier here. For all V and W, sorry, for all V in V and small W in the vector space W. And then what's the other scalar? Okay, so T of what? Okay, you want K? Okay, sure. K, K KV is equal to KTV. Okay, KTV. Okay, good. Good choice. So, uh, this K is in our scalar field. Okay, this is scalar. Okay, so you can pull the scalar up from the operator, or you can split your operator into some of the uh, operator. Uh, I mean, it's the same operator, but you distribute your operator across your uh, across your across your input. Okay, across your input. So if you want to compute T of V plus W, how to do? You should know how to compute on T V and T W, and then you just add them up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that this limit here also have a similar similar property. You can pull the concern up, okay? you can distribute into the uh, sum difference. Okay, so I'll call this a linear operator. Okay, On, only one thing I didn't tell you is why r infinity is a vector space, but you can try and uh, you can find it why. Okay, yeah. Okay, I just try to give you a context here. Okay, so um, what should we do now? So after proposition, we should see how to apply this. Okay, let's see how to apply this. So I want you to work on it now. Okay, so try and discuss with your friend what's the limit of this sequence here. Okay, I give you three to five minutes. Okay, try and discuss with your friend what's the limit of this guy. Does it converge? Yeah, try and discuss with your friend. Use the um, tool I gave you just now. Yeah, see if you can figure out anything. Can you find any uh, convergence sequence here? Can you find any convergence sequence so that you can use the proposition? Yeah, try. Okay. It is normal that if you don't get the answer, but you have to try. Okay. So to use the proposition, you need convergent sequence. Any sequence here is converging or not? If not, how to get convergent sequence? Or you have another way to show it? But I can give you a clue is uh, this uh, sequence converge. So you should be able to find out. You should be able to find the name in. Try and, try and, try and discuss it. Cheap idea to your friend. See you can cook out anything or not. 
Um, anything can you try? Yeah. Or you try, fail, so how to improve? Okay. Yeah, these are the skills you need to learn. Okay. Yeah. All the real world problem is solved from nothing. You don't know anything. Then you build up from scratch. Okay. Done. Anyone got any answer? Any L? Three or seven. How about you? Three or seven. Yeah. Three or seven. Okay. Uh. So one by one, maybe. So. Uh. Joshua. Joshua. Okay. Okay. Joshua. So how how do you get three over seven? Wow, that's Raman again. Again, how to get over there? Ah, okay. Okay, and then? So let me, let me, let me write down what you are trying to say, okay? So first, so I use Lopitaru. Let me write down what you say and then I will question you. Okay, so use Lopitaru twice. Everyone agree? Understand what he say? Okay, then I just write it down, okay? So twice. I'll say use twice. 3n squared over 7n squared. So once you get 6n over seven, sorry, 14. And uh, lock it down again. Get six over 14. And then this is uh, seven. Okay. Is that all? That's all? Is it correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you happy? I'm not happy. <laughs> okay, I'm not happy. Okay, so why can you use Lopita Root? Okay, so you need to check that whether it's a uh, no, you know, uh, numerator and numerator. Okay, let me, let me write up. Okay, so first thing you need to check is whether Okay, so let me, I don't write down the condition yet. You just say, uh, does, uh, does the assumption, but you need to check whether the assumption of uh, L'Hopital rule are achieved. Even before that, L'Hopital rule applies to what kind of object? What kind of object? What kind of function you are considering in the guitar? No, no, no. I mean, what kind of function exists in the guitar? No, quite. What are those? Yeah, real, real value function. Okay, not just real value function. Real value function just means that the value is in real. But the domain is also in real. Okay? L'Hopital well, rules only apply. I mean, in your theorem, you learn apply to 
function from real to real. Okay, what's this function here? What, what kind of function here? I put n here. This function is n to real. Okay, so first of all, I need to make this n into real. Maybe I put x. Okay, maybe I change it to x. So I make it real first, and I get this. So any relation between real function and an integer uh, domain function? Any relation between these two? Can you recall what's the theorem we learned in the last hour? The limit is the same. If the limit of the function of real to real exists, then limit of Fun uh, function from n to real also exists, and they are the same. Okay, so there are a few steps going on here. Okay, I want you to write every step down into your assignment one by one. Okay, clear. Okay, so by theorem, so now only I can use by theorem. Okay, limit of my sequence 3n squared over. 7n squared plus 1 is equal to 3 over 7 since, okay, since the real counterpart is also going to what? Okay. Yeah, by theorem. Happy with this? Everyone got this? Okay, I want you to write uh, step by step down what you use, what you achieve, what you can use, and then what's your final answer. In your assignment, okay, step by step. Okay, we got two more, right? So, do, do you use the same answer or not? The same solution? Okay, cool. So, right, so let me do this. So, the second way, the yeah, second way you can do is. 3n squared over 7n squared plus 1. Okay, you divide it by what? The highest, the highest degree term in the. Okay, how about, how about tell me which, what, what terms you want to divide with? Uh, what term you want to divide with? n squared. So how to divide? Divide top and bottom? Okay, divide top and bottom by n squared. Okay, so you want to figure out whether this is the highest or lowest. Okay, try and think about it. So this will make this sequence become 3 over 7 plus 1 over n squared. Do you think this will change? Does this make any changes to our sequence? We are like modifying the sequence, right? Multiply by one. Does this change our sequence? Why not? Because you just multiply by what? Okay, you just multiply by one. Okay, multiply by one does nothing to the sequence. Okay, but you change the representation of this sequence here. Okay, so from here, how to see that this limit of this sequence is going to zero? Sorry, going to three over seven. Okay, one over n squared is convergent. Okay, one way is how how is one over n square conversion? Okay, when we put a limit, sure. That's the de that's the definition. When we put n equals infinity, where does this converge to? N one over one over n square converge to where? Zero. Why is it zero? Which theorem? Yeah, which theorem? How to show this converge to zero? What theorem you want to use? Oh yeah, okay. Use the same the real counterpart, right? The real counterpart of one over x squared converge to zero. Okay, so uh, uh, by uh, theorem, okay, by theorem. So limit of x go to infinity one over x squared is zero. Sorry, ah correct. Okay, is zero implies the 
sequence also. Sequence of one over n square also from those two. Okay. Uh, how about um, there are two ways. Okay, I can use proposition as well. So just now I tell you that we also know that uh, limit of one over n goes to zero. Okay, because by the same theorem, one over x go to zero. Okay, so can you use this fact to prove that one over n square go to zero? Yeah. How? Okay, so what's the a n and b n you want to take in this case? One over n. Yeah. One over n. Yeah. Yeah, it's opposite with the Chinese. <laughs> yeah. One over n. Yeah. English is more direct. It's just a uh, one over n. Chinese is like, uh, yeah, n times b. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. So um, so how to compute uh, one over n square? Okay, you can split the function into 1 over n times 1 over n, but 1 over n and 1 over n converge. Okay, so by proposition, uh, we can say that this is just equal to, I can bring the limit into the product. Okay, this is by proposition. Okay, so every step, when you write down an equal sign here, okay, you should tell me why they are equal. Okay, in your assignment. You cannot simply just equal, 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 equal everything and get some answer. You need to convince me at each step. Okay. Okay. So next step, we get zero, zero by, uh, by, uh, no, by, uh, okay. So here is, I put assumption already. So suppose, okay. Uh, depend on how you want to see it, but uh, I just say by this line. Okay. I just uh, label this as, uh, mm, label as one. Maybe label as a, so by a, okay, and then we'll get zero, zero times zero, okay. Uh, so you might think that wow, such a big business uh, just to show one over n square converged to zero, okay. So because you are started new, right? I want you to do step by step first, okay. In future, then you can speed the step, okay. I want to make sure you know what is going on, okay. So we know that this is uh, this term converge. Okay, how about the other terms? Just constant. Yeah. Okay, constant sequence are virgin sequence. In particular, they converge to tensor. Okay, you need to tell me which constant. Right? You cannot just say constant, constant because everything is constant. So it will converge to itself. Okay, how that itself? Okay, so you see that this converge to itself, this converge to itself, this converge to zero. So how we piece this information together? So we need to use the prop proposition multiples time. Okay, we need to use the proposition multiples time. Okay, so let me write it down. Okay, so first of all, we can deal with the denominator first, right? Okay, we know that seven converges, one over n squared converges. So we know that seven plus one over n squared also converge. Okay, but we want to bring our limit into this fraction. So we need to be able to tell whether three converge or not, seven plus one over n squared converge or not, right? So we already know that seven plus one over n squared converge, three, just now we said that constant sequence always converge. So what we can do is, uh, we can bring the limit to the top and bottom, okay? Why? Since uh, three and, uh, 7 plus 1 over n square are convergent, are convergent. Okay. So you can ask again, why are 7 plus 1 over n square converge? Because they are the sum of two convergent uh, sequences. Okay. So we can go on. Uh, so this one is basically done. What is this? What's the numerator? It's just three, okay? But how about the bottom one? What should we do? Separate, okay? Can we separate them? Why? Because both are 
conversion sequence. Okay, since uh, 7 and 1 over n square are convergent. Okay, so 7 are convergent is clear because it's constant. 1 over n square, why is it converge? Because we just show it. Okay, we just show it. So since they converge, so in particular, limit of uh, 7 for n to infinity is just 7, and then 1 over n squared goes to 0. So you get this. Triple seven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's not long, but just yeah. uh, a bit wordy mouth. To say it's a bit uh, good. Okay. Any other method you guys use or not? Oh, other than these two. No? Okay. If you happen to know one, please let me know. Okay. okay. Good. Thanks. Okay, next. Um, let's try one more. Okay, let's try one more. So, for example, does the uh, the following sequence converge? So, this sequence is n over square root e n plus 2. Does this converge on? Okay. If yes, to what number? Okay, I'll show you. Give you two sequence to try, okay? The other one is uh, ln n over n. Okay, I similarly, I give you five minutes. You go and discuss with your friends. So uh, one is uh, n over square root e n plus two. The other one is ln n over n. Okay, try and see whether these two converge. If it converge, please find the limit. Yeah, I'll give you five minutes and yeah, discuss this two question here. Yeah. Square root of x uh, e the logarithm, the core logarithm, natural log, natural oh, not log, uh, the uh, exponent times n plus two. You you know what this e is? The irrational number e. Yeah 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 yeah. Um, so that e times n plus two. Yes. Or if you want, uh, I also can put pi. Yeah, just some irrational number. Okay, so please remember what kind of a tool at your disposal and then try and uh, play around with the tools. Okay. Let me go on to the washroom and then we'll come back.
Um, okay, how is how are you guys going? The working? No. See someone shaking their head. Anyone got anything for n over square root e n plus two? Diverge or converge? Diverge. Okay, so why? Why does it diverge? How do you show that it diverges? Huh? How do you show it diverges? How do you show it diverges? Hmm? How do you show it diverges? Hmm? So how you guess? Guess this thing diverges? What's your idea? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. 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 So you mean you mean you 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 um you guess that because the numerator increases faster than the denominator, so it uh, diverge again. Okay. Mm, this generally not true. Okay, there's some example that you can show that this kind of uh, polynomial. I mean, yeah. Rational polynomial converge. Okay, but in this case, it diverge. Okay, so how to show it diverge? Okay, so no, anyone want to say? No, okay, then I will try my method. So, so what you can do is uh, you can try and decrease a little bit, okay, decrease a little bit the degree. For example, one over square root n, uh, square root n. Yeah, so just decrease a little bit. And see what's going on here. Okay, what do you have here? You have square root n over square root e plus two over n. So from here, what can you see? So if you try and write down each term, okay, n equals to one, n equals to two, n equals to three, n equals to four. So what what is going on with this term? Can you see something from the denominator? Yes, it converts to E. Okay, but the numerator keep increasing, right? Just now at the start, I said square root S is an increasing function. So your top is keep increasing, but your bottom kind of uh, converts to a fixed number. Okay, so uh, this um, this sequence diverges. Okay, let me write down the whole statement here. So. Observe that the denominator will converge to a finite number square e, but but what the numerator diverges to infinity. Okay, so hence, uh, hence the sequence averages. Okay, yeah. Does everyone buy this argument? Yeah. You, you please ask uh, if you have uh, any uh, concern uh, because I uh, don't think that I'm a uh, hundred percent true. Uh. Let me tell you, uh, in science, uh, there's nothing like 100% true. Uh. Did you guys learn physics or not? Learn physics? Okay. Is Newton theory true? Why is it not true? Okay, it, 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 it explains things about gravity, okay, but it doesn't work when you try and compute the uh, orbital of Mercury. Yeah, so there's something else coming in. So who fits it? Yes, Einstein fits it using general relativity. So is general relativity true? What? Why is it not true? Uh, 
from what I learned is it breaks down in the black hole. You cannot calculate anything in black holes. Okay. Yeah, so you see, since they are false in some sense, right? Why we still put it into test book and then people have to learn it? Because, okay, let you say. Because what? Okay. You have opinion. Maybe you can tell us. Yeah, so science is an advancing course. Okay, it's an advancing subject. Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't mean that it is false or false. Okay, it's true in some sense. So we need to build on this. Okay, so there's a phrase in like standing on the shoulders of giant. Okay, so we are all standing on the shoulders of the giant. Okay, yeah. So we keep improving our Okay, maybe this argument maybe. For AI, AI don't recognize it. So how should you tell AI? So you need to do it in a formal way so that the AI will understand. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's keep this subject to next time. Maybe we'll expand it. But uh, how about this uh, long n over n? Does it converge? Yes. yes. Converge to what? Zero. How to show? You use orbital. Okay, trans look at the real counterpart. Okay, so yeah, so this is quite obvious here. So the first thing you can try is always uh, look at the real counterpart, whether the limit exists or not. If it exists, then surely we know that uh, the sequence have also the same limit. Okay, um, so how to use orbital? So since the top and bottom going to where? Infinity. Okay, so we can use orbital. So 1 over x, 1 by orbital. Okay, so if you want to add extra clear, so since, uh, since what? Long x go to infinity, when x go to infinity, and then x go to infinity, when x go to infinity. Okay, and then you can get the limit of 1 over x is actually just 0. So by theorem before, we know that the sequence also just to 0. Do you have class after this? No? OK, can I steal a minute from you? OK, let me. Uh, give you one uh, idea and then we'll break off. Okay, so mm, let's say, okay, let's say, say, do you have class? Okay, okay. Say we have a three, three sequence here, A N, B N, and C N. Okay. For well, this inequality hold for O N. Okay, so A1, B1 is squeezed between A1 and C and uh, A1 and C1. Okay. B2 is squeezed between A2 and C2. Okay. And furthermore, okay, furthermore, we know that A N and C N both converge to F. Okay. So you want to guess whether BN converge or not? Does BN converge? Okay, let me let me give you a picture, right? Let me give you a picture. Okay, let me give you a picture. One example is like this. Okay. For example, let's say I have an AN like this. Okay, increasing. And then maybe I have a CN. So let me label this. And a CN maybe decreasing. Okay, both of them converge to the same limit. Okay, let's call this L, right? Okay. Yeah. And then I have a BN. Okay, BN jumping in between, maybe. But never go outside of BN and A. So should BN converge? Converge to what? L, okay, 
So this is the next theorem. We're going to introduce a squeeze theorem. OK, so the BN will converge to average. OK, so uh, we'll continue on uh, Thursday. Thursday? Yeah, okay, see you on Thursday. Bye.